Today, we're talking all about how you can plan a year's worth of youth ministry games in less than 30 minutes. Hello and welcome to the Ministry Coach Podcast, where we bring you weekly tips and tactics to help you fast track the growth and health of your youth ministry. Our goal, whether you have two students or 200 students in your youth group, is to come alongside you during your youth ministry journey and help you as much as possible. If this is the first time we've met, my name is Jeff Lascola and this is Kristen Lascola. And tonight we're going to help you in less than 30 minutes figure out an entire year's worth of gaming. Gaming? Like your video gaming? No, like <laughs> No, games. we're gambling. We're gaming. Um, can we do that? Uh, we'll find out. That seems like a tall order, Jeff, but I think I'm up for the challenge. All right. So games are one of those things that I think youth pastors like are like, okay, what game am I going to play? Right. Like it's one of those things you sort of leave to the last minute because totally. you're like, I'll just kind of Figure Which something is why out. we have two episodes that are all about last minute games. Yeah, because we've all been there. But I think there's a better way to not like scramble at the last minute for games and wonder every week what we're going to play and all of that. You and have could... students just be like, why are we playing dodgeball again? Well, they no, they actually love it. it. I was going to say <laughs> they wouldn't say that they would love it. But games are not going away. Yeah. Like they are a staple of youth ministry. They keep kids coming. They're part of the kids love language. They're important, valuable. So how can we get better at our game for games? Ah, <laughs> mm. All right. So um, if you want to plan your whole year's worth of games, and then you can kind of check that off your list. Here's how I would do it. Doesn't mean it's the only way, but here's how I would do it. First, I would identify 15 games that my students love. Okay. So I would break these down into four different categories. There's different categories of games that I see. You might add in an extra category, but you know, this is just a skeleton for you. So number one, indoor runaround games or active games. Mm -hmm. Number two, outdoor active games. Number three, indoor up front games where it's like a stage okay. kind of like we need a volunteer yeah. kind of thing and indoor tame games, meaning they're not like run around games, but they have, they're not like just one person plays at a time okay. up in front game. Okay. So it's a tamer game, but it's played inside. So here's how many I would pick for each category to equal my 15. <laughs> Are you with me? Okay. I'm, I'm not trying to make this complicated, but as I'm this saying is, it, this is math and I'm a little worried <laughs> for you because I failed algebra one twice. <laughs> and the only way I graduated from high school is taking consumer math at a community <laughs> college. <laughs> okay. So I would do five indoor Active games okay. because that's my students. I'm going to check your math as we're going. Okay. okay go sounds ahead. good. That's my students' favorite category. So I'm going to do the most of those. And our building, the way it is, lends itself more to that because our only outdoor space to play is the parking lot. Mm. Really? I mean, we don't have a field right. or anything like that. So our indoor runaround games are the most popular. So I'm going to pick five of those and then I'm going to do two indoor upfront games. Okay. I'm going to do four outdoor runaround games and I'm going to do four tamer indoor games Okay. for a your, total your of math 15. adds up. Good job. She did it. <laughs> okay. So those numbers could be whatever you want them to be based on the preferences of your group. Like I said, those are the breakdown for my students' preferences and based on the resources you have available. We have a really big auditorium that when we clear it, we can play a lot of really fun games in it. Mm -hmm. Outdoor games are a lot harder for me because there's cars in the parking lot and different things like that. Another note with this is that the games that I'm able to play at my midweek program versus 
church, mm. like weekend services is also a little bit different. So the games I would choose, like I would probably do two yearly calendars, one for weekend games okay. and one for midweek games. Some youth groups are like, they only do a midweek or, you know, and then the kids go with their parents, um, like to church. So just keep that in mind of there's, because of our increased numbers on the midweek, there's certain games that just we can do that we couldn't do on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So I um, just want to mention that. So then you have your 15 games and it's a mix of those four categories. And now you have your calendar and you basically just start plugging them in. And 15 games gives you a about three months worth of games okay. with a few to spare. And the reason I say needing a few to spare, because sometimes I'll look at a game that I, cause I do have a game calendar. I have it all scheduled out. And sometimes I'll look at like, all right, it's August 9th. What game are we going to play this week? And I'll look what I have scheduled and I'm like, I don't really feel like it, like <laughs> not in the mood. And so I'll swap out another game. So it's nice to have some extra games to plug in as you go. Yeah. So when you have 15, it gives you a little bit of options. So then you literally write them on your calendar and take into account a few things like weather. Right. For me, weather doesn't matter a whole lot, but, um, <laughs> but in Southern California, if it does rain, it's like, Stop the world. What is happening? <laughs> People we, we don't literally know what to text do. me. Is there still youth group today? I'm like, <laughs> does God still exist? <laughs> because it's raining. Yeah, we're all going to be okay because we have a building. I, so, remember? Okay. Total rabbit trail. But along that same note, I have a lot of family in Ohio. Shout out to my Ohio people. And I used to go back there when I was a kid. We'd go and like play golf and stuff like that. It was so normal to just in the middle of a round, like, oh, there's a thunderstorm. We just roll into the pro shop, wait 15 minutes, roll right back and keep playing like it was nothing. Huh. Whereas out here, I'm like, your entire day is ruined. There's water. Is I don't know what to do. School? No Can one I even blinked back there. It was like nothing happened. So. Well, because San They're Diego is like weatherless almost. Yeah. And so it's just like always the same. It doesn't really matter. But I remember over COVID, some of our listeners were like, hey, any tips for how to do church outside in the snow? I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what is snow? What is snow? <laughs> um, so yeah, keep in mind the time of year you're planning stuff. Um, if weather greatly affects your group or keep in mind also holidays. Sometimes yeah. I think it's fun to theme like, it. yeah, theme your game if it's falling on Valentine's Day or right by Halloween or stuff like that. So take into account those days. But for the most part, for the majority of the year, you should be able to plug these 15 games in and rotate them every three months. Totally. Because you look at the year calendar, you're like, oh, I need like 50 50 games right. like for the whole, no, you need 15 really good games mm -hmm. to rotate. Now here's, here's some bonuses with the system that will help you be creative. So if you have a three month solid plan, well the year, but every three months, right. it gives you a little bit of time, hopefully to be creative and have a margin to research and look up new games. So you already have the safety net of mm -hmm. my games are planned. My games are ready. I have the supplies and equipment. I know it's coming up, but say it's a super easy night and it's like, well, we're going to play some variation of dodgeball. You already have all the stuff. It's a no brainer. It's going to be a win. Maybe you spend that week like, huh, let me incorporate one new trial game mm -hmm. per month because that now you're going to, I only have to plan one game a month. And then if that game is a win, you now you can put that as number 16 or number 17. And now you have this growing list that you can start plugging in and rotating weaker games out. Or if your students right. are over them or getting your new games in. And so what I like to do is I keep game logs. Like I just make an Excel sheet of August 9th. We played uh square of no return dodgeball. This was fun, but the teams were too big or the rounds were too long or whatever, or this game sucked to never play it again, <laughs> or this game was really good as is total win. Can't wait to play it again. And so I keep little notes to let myself know 
what would have made it better? And if this is a repeat game, and then it helps me also look, I mean, you, you should have your calendar, but also like, huh, what haven't we played in a while? So keeping track of your games, if you don't already do that is a really smart move because then it helps you plan a lot better. So that's going to hopefully give you some room for creativity. And speaking of creativity, one of the best ways to find new games that I love lately is search middle school and high school PE games. Mm. So if your group is active, ironically, middle school and high school PE games are searching youth ministry. Games. Ah, <laughs> we are in a symbiotic the and the egg. relationship, but I found this PE website the other day and it was like, it had all the instructions and like a little diagram of where you put the players and the cones mm. and all that. And I'm like, yeah, some PE games are super sweet. And <laughs> um, so that's one good place. I also love to go on DYM for my mm. up and front stage games. I feel like there's always something fun, especially around the holidays on DYM. There'll be like a fun Thanksgiving game right. or whatever. Another place to go is the Grow app. Yeah. Um, they, I search that all the time of just like, what do they have? And they always have new stuff. Right. And it's usually very low supplies needed. Um, and then random, but Pinterest, I mean, I still don't know how to use Pinterest. Jeff, I don't understand it. You're such a boomer. So, <laughs> and a male. <laughs> Isn't the Pinterest? Oh, I'm like, I'm like, uh, 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 what? <laughs> you are? Well, play it back. You'll get it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do math. That's all I can do. <laughs> Leave me alone. So yeah, Pinterest, like I've searched youth group games on that before and, and I've found like some fun icebreakers and yeah. stuff like that. And then obviously a good old Google search, but then that just takes the pressure off for you to plan something new every week. Get your, get your 15 and I'll give you some examples of mine in a minute and then add in one or two every couple of months. And then maybe those are your new favorites. That is honestly how I found some of my students' favorite games is just a random search and kind of like asking around or going to a new website, seeing what's out there yeah. and then maybe adapting it a little bit for my group. And it's become like a 10 year staple in my youth ministry, right. but you never know when you're going to strike gold. So that's why I think you need to search a lot, research a lot and add to your game library right. because once in a while you hit gold and it's like, yeah, a the legend. problem would be is if you did like a month of brand new games to your ministry, it could be four flops in a row. And you're like, well, this is right, lame. I'm really right. not enjoying game because time. Because it's hard to test a game without actually playing yeah. it. You know, like sometimes my staff and I will test things a little bit. Like, okay, how far do you need to throw this? And right. where should we tape it off? But it doesn't really right. come alive until you play and you see like, oh, but again, you can troubleshoot too. It's like, you know, this would have been fun, but this game equipment sucked right. or, you know, stuff like that. And that like all that. goes in your notes on your Excel spreadsheet, which yeah. takes like two minutes or less to do that. Right. And that's why it's like all this to say like, yes, you need to take games seriously if you're a youth pastor, <laughs> like get good at it because it's not going away. Um, so like really like hone in on that skill. And I think that's what we're saying here. So a few examples of my in my students favorite indoor runaround games. I said, I would have chosen five of the five of these because this is our like sweet spot. Operation Night Scramble, you like hide a bunch of glow sticks and the kids have to find them and bring them back and put them in the bucket without getting hit by leaders. If you get hit by a leader, <laughs> you have to surrender your <laughs> like glow stick. Punch. Yeah, right in the slap, face. punch, sucker punch. They use socks with another balled up sock yeah, in or, it or something. Or pool noodles or okay. dodgeballs, or you could just tag them, whatever. But <laughs> another one would be different variations of dodgeball. So um, nail polish, dodgeball. We, yeah. Square of no return. We Dr. Do. Dodgeball. Yeah. That one? So some kind of variation of that. They love it. Never. Gets we have old. an episode on dodgeball variation games. Yeah. So I'll, link I'll link it below. Um, the purge. That's where everyone gets a balloon and it's every man for himself. Basically you have to protect your balloon from getting popped while popping other people's last one standing wins. Note on that. If they get out, make sure they can't play because they get very violent. violent. Scatterball, that one's super fun. You can look it up. And Birdie on a Perch, which we've included in one of our episodes before. I think we've included all of those. Yeah, in episodes so those before. are our top five indoor runaround games. So then I said I do four outdoor runaround games, which I would choose Predator. We've talked about that before. 3D Kickball, 
flag football, which we just kind of started playing. It's a really mm. old game, but so much fun. Yeah. And then ultimate football or Frisbee. And that's where you like pass, take two steps. I think we've included that in episode as well. Then I said I'd choose two indoor upfront games. Again, I'd go to DYM and find something new here and there. They're so cheap. They're worth it in a pinch. If I wasn't doing DYM, I'd do Pictionary. My kids are all about it lately. Boys versus girls Pictionary. When you choose really weird, fun clues, it's a blast. And then make sure you take pictures <laughs> of the art and post it to your story on Instagram because it is the most hilarious art ever. <laughs> like Caleb tried to draw Darth Vader two weekends ago. It, he's like, I can do this it's so easy. It was the weird. I wish I could show the picture on our thing, but I don't have it. It's so funny. And then total recall is another one. And that's like seen it like where you have a clip of a cool movie and yeah, then you or ask, uncool movie. Yeah. And then you ask the questions about the scene. So those are the indoor upfront games. And now I said, I choose four indoor tame games. Number one, I choose deadly dice. Number two, I'd choose poop deck. Number three, I'd choose four corners. And I, I added a few extra in here because I couldn't really decide. Stop the bus. Did we already talk about musical body parts on here? Yep. Okay, that one is so <laughs> fun. And then we just played this weekend. I thought it was Extreme Extremities. Or was that a, a, a name that we got eliminated? I think that was in our brainstorming session, but we went with <laughs> musical body parts. <laughs> Um, and then ultimate rock, paper, scissors. That's the one with the hula hoops oh, yeah. and you jump, 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 Rochambeau. And then you get to keep going. If you win, we just played that yesterday at church. It was a blast. Um, I won twice for the girls. Thank you very much, boys. You suck. Um, okay. So that is my favorite picks. If I were going to do my calendar and then I would go through and keep adding a few games throughout the year. And then when I go to do my 2023 calendar, I'd be like, oh, I have four new games to add to my yeah. yearly calendar. And it's just only going to get better and better and better and better and better <laughs> over time. Sorry. Did you say you'd <laughs> add one per quarter or one per month? I would try a, one new game per month, whether it's on Sunday or the weekends okay. or on Tuesdays, but does it make it to the rotation? I don't know. Well, also to say is if so, if you're counting Sundays and mid midweek program, you could have 24. If my math is correct, 24 new games if they were all hits mm -hmm. theoretically. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, and then you could do a six month rotation next time instead of recycling every three right. months. But the truth is like, okay, so even if a student came every single Tuesday or every single Wednesday and they played dodgeball and then three months later they play dodgeball again, it's not like, Oh, we just played this, right. you know, like I feel like, I mean, they have pizza every week. They really can't yeah, exactly. do the same thing. Over if it's and over a win, it's again. a win. So it's like, you know, and then I'll have students be like, we haven't played predator in forever. And I'm like, we played it two months ago. What are you talking about? So if they love it, it won't get old, you know, and then you can even refine the games you already have of like, let's add a soundtrack to right. this game, or let's add a light show to this game, or I'm going to buy new flags, or let's add two footballs mm -hmm. for flag. You know, like you can keep the point is keep getting better guys right. at games because that is a big draw to youth group. Like don't. And I, I mean, I've harped on this before, but it's like, sometimes we're like, well, who cares? Like it's all about, and it is all about Jesus, but it's also the joy that we bring to the people we're ministering to. Right. And this is their love language. Well, and so. step number one is get them in the building. Yeah. And if that is something that will do that, then you get the opportunity to share the gospel or yeah. reinforce their, uh, well, their faith. The walls come down too. I right. feel like once you've had fun totally. together and run around together and a laugh together, you're just so much more receptive to whatever is coming next. Yeah. So, um, bonus end. tip. If you are going to be adding a game to your rotation, you can look and see like, do we have already have the materials for this mm -hmm. instead of being like, never play this before. And it's going to cause us, you know, we have to buy a whole new, whatever, maybe aim for the ones that's like, we already have dodgeballs. Let's try this other well, variation. Well, in every or... single thing I said in my 15 games, well, I gave probably like 18. The only thing that was somewhat expensive, which wasn't even, is the flags for flag football. Everything else was pretty much free. Or if you do make that 
think, okay, I can make this big purchase to get whatever, maybe find a handful of games that you could play with that. Yeah. You know, just so that you're not wasting your money. All right, you guys, let's do, oh, let's do question of the day first. Question of the day, we skipped it last week. Sorry about that. But we did a question of the day. It just wasn't this one. This is going from two weeks ago where we talked about something about Disney. What ride would you get rid of? Oh, what ride would you get rid of? That's right. (laughs) What movie, what Disney movie should have a ride at Disneyland or Disney World that doesn't? You go first. <laughs> we talked beforehand and we had the same We had the movie. same answer, so uh, I had to choose it? a new one. Uh, I said Aladdin because the magic carpet ride is just begging to have an epic it ride really to is. It. it. I'm thinking Peter Pan, you know, uh-huh. where you're flying over the city, but like like way grander, you know, but that same idea. Right. I think that would be really cool. You know, that gives me another idea. Maybe the movie up, like say that you're in like, um, like almost like a hot air balloon ride mm. kind of thing. Like, I don't know. That could be cool. But I, I was going to say Pocahontas. Like, I think it'd be cool if they changed Splash Mountain into Pocahontas, yeah. like just around the river. Right. There. Nope. Tiana got that one. I know, which will be super cute. I'm excited. Yeah. I was just, I thought they would do something in the French quarter with tiana but you know whatever. yeah that'd be cute. no one listens to me all right this <laughs> a lot is of card. <laughs> dear disneyland at disney <laughs> all right this is from our podcast channel um on apple Podcasts from striker 1988 and Ooh. he or she says I like that name. Worth every, I know I do too. Worth every minute, whether you are just starting out or have been in ministry for a while, this is a great resource for you. They talk about practical topics and break everything down in an easy to follow manner. Wow. Thank you, Thanks, Striker. Striker yes, we try to be very practical and we're glad you think so. Yeah. One of the goals we always had with this podcast is that at the end of it, that every youth pastor or youth worker listening could walk away and be able to implement something. Yeah. Cause that's what we all want. It's like, give me the stuff, <laughs> a little less talk, a little more do <laughs> right. So there you have it. Try and plan your entire year's worth of games and you can do it in less than 30 minutes. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening, and And we will see see you you next time. time. You can plan a year's worth of youth ministry games in under... (laughs) Whatever I go to say, youth (laughs) little sickle. That's like hard to say. No. No, 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 no. The what? (laughs) Uh, The what? (laughs) Oh, I see. I see.